Hey guys, Kevin here. Today we're going to be talking about the Roland TR-808 software synth. This is almost an exact replica from Roland's 1980 release of the drum machine. If you don't know, it's pretty iconic. It's in tons of hits in the 80s, Sexual Healing, Marvin Gaye, I Want to Dance with Somebody by Whitney Houston, as well as tons of hip-hop artists, LL Cool J, Run DMC, Kanye West, and it's even still used today. So let's talk about where you can buy this. So this is in Rolling Cloud, which is a subscription-based service. There's three different packages, the Core, Pro, and Ultimate, and the 808 is in the Pro and Ultimate, which are $10 and $20 a month. The Core is only $3 a month, and if you do get the Core, you get a free month of the Ultimate. So if you kind of want a trial, a free month trial, you could call it, it's $3. I'm sure you could also wait for a sale. There's plenty of sales throughout the year on software synthesizers. I'm sure you get your hands on this for free at one point. So yeah, keep your eyes open. So as a side-by-side, -side, it's basically identical. All of the major functions are still here. The main difference is all of the editing and our preset banks. So as you can see in the top left, we have our patterns, which we'll see in a second. It's all of these guys down here, right? We can have a ton of them. We can have, I believe 128 per bank. This is a bank and we can have an unlimited amount of banks, right? So 128 and then we can also have our kits, which are kits are all the sounds right here. We can edit the sounds, how they're tuned, how they're panned, all that. So let's get into it. Let's talk about how do we make a pattern. So as you can see here in each preset of a pattern, we can have eight different patterns or variations and this is how we play them. We click here. We can also hold shift to play multiple at a time. So it's going to play A and then B and then C and then D. And then down here, we can edit them all. So if you're not familiar with the original 808, we have plenty of iconic sounds. So the first one is a bass drum, then a snare, three different toms, a rim shot, a clap, cowbell, and then a cymbal, and then two hi-hats, one open, one close. So also we can have two different volumes. So we have a loud right here, and then we have a soft. It's very subtle. Um, so down in the edit, we can click to add a note, right? And if we shift click, it'll add a soft note, a ghost note. So let's try and hear the difference. You hear that? You hear how the upbeats, the E and the uh, are softer? So let's learn how to write a quick little pattern, and then we'll go back and show how we can edit some of the sounds. So let's pick a new preset. So we'll just come down here. Here's some ones that I've just been messing around with. We'll pick a new one. So as you can see, we're still on the same kit, the same basic kit, but our pattern is now blank. It's a new pattern. As you can see, these are all empty. So we're going to listen to pattern A, and we can add in some stuff. So as you can see, 1, 5, 9, and 13 are our downbeats. And there are four 16th notes in each beat. We can change this using our scale, which we'll talk about in a minute. But for now, let's just keep it to a basic beat, 4-4. Four, four. So I'll start playing it. And as you can hear, we're going to have snare on 2 and 4 and a kick on 1 and 3. Very simple. Now we can add in some hi-hats. Let's hear how that sounds. Right? And then we can also add some upbeat, some open hi-hats, and hear how that sounds. If you have a closed hi-hat underneath an open hi-hat, it doesn't allow the open hi-hat to fully play. It'll sound like this, right? As opposed to this. And also, if we have a closed hi-hat Right after it, it'll cut it off, whereas if we leave it open, it'll go its full duration. See the difference? So, yeah, let's check it out. We also have a cymbal, some cowbells. And we can put in some random toms, just hear how that sounds. Got some claps.
You can also add an accent, right? So we have our pattern. So now let's figure out how to edit some of the sounds. So up here on our first panel, we can see that we can change the level of everything. And some instruments, we can change the tuning, the tone, decay, something, some things like that. In these middle five right here, we can actually change the instrument itself. Uh, you can't have more than one. You're going to have to make a whole new pattern in order to have both at the same time. But our toms can turn into congas. And then our rim shot can be a clave. And our hand clap can be a maraca. Which a maraca is kind of like a hi-hat sound. And the clave sounds exactly like a clave. What we can do here is change some of the tuning of the toms. Let's hear them as congas. Let's hear our, well, we don't have any rim shots yet, but let's add some in. Right. Very subtle. Here's it as a clave. And then here's our hand clap as a maraca. So that's all the kind of sounds we can do. On the cymbals, we can have it open. So longer lasting, think of like release. That's what decay would be for this. Here along the, the cymbal lasts. And then on our snare drum, we have tone and snap. So our tone is the sound of the drum and then our snap is the snare, right? So we can turn off the snare completely if we take snap all the way down. Now it sounds like a tom. And you can hear the tone a lot better. Right? So the lower, it has a lot more body. And then our snap is going to be the snare, how much it rings. Right? Bass drum, same thing. We got decay. Decay is how long it lasts, how tight the head is, really. And then the tone is going to be almost like the pitch, right? So decay up, think like boom, like a bass. And our tone, it's almost like a filter, right? The cool thing with this compared to the original 808 is there's a second panel. So all right here, we can change the gain of each channel as well as the panning, right? And the also is a tuning for the cowbell and the bass drum. All right, so let's take the pattern that we made and let's show some more advanced techniques here with, uh, we have different durations, different sub steps, they call it, and we can add some flams. And there's a ton of different versions here, right? And we'll walk through it. We can also have different beats, and we can also change the time signature for individual uh, channels. We can have the snare drum go in uh, every three beats while everything else goes four. So there's a ton you can do. So let's check it out. So here's our original thing, original pattern, and then Let's just go in and put some ghost notes first. So, right, I'm holding down shift and clicking, and this is just going to be some weak beats. Let's hear how that sounds. So, what this is doing is it's really giving a more human feel. Yeah, another thing we can do is add some shuffle. So up here is our macro shuffle for our entire board. And then down here we can change the shuffle for each individual track. However, if the shuffle on the whole board is at zero, this means nothing, right? There's no shuffle on any track. However, if we have a lot of shuffle, we can have, let's say we want our hi-hats to be straight, no shuffle, right? We turn this all the way down to zero. All the other tracks are going to be shuffled. However, our hi-hat is going to be straight. You hear that? Just straight 16 notes. So we can make some pretty cool patterns just messing around and changing the shuffle amount for each individual track. Another thing we can do is add some sub steps. So what this means is each one of these lit up little steps in the step sequencer 
it equals what it equals, right? So this is 1 16th note right here. So what we can do if we want to play twice as fast, instead of having to make a whole new pattern that's twice as long, we can take this and just put in a substep. And Roland makes it nice and easy. As you can see, it's a different color. So blue is a duple, meaning this will now be 30 second notes. It'll be twice as fast. So let's, let's hear it on the snare drum. It'll be really easy to hear on the snare drum. Right? Oh, and the shuffle's still on. Let me turn the shuffle off. Right? So there's two notes for every, every step. And then type two is going to be a 16th note triplet. So a triplet feel. Obviously, if our tempo is slower, it'll groove a lot more. Uh, and then the last one is going to be a 64th note, or four notes for every step. Right? It's a little obnoxious, but it gets the point. So we can add it to our, our hi-hat, and it'll be a lot more flavorful. Cool. So another thing we can do is add a flam. As you can see, there are a ton of different types. So the difference between type one through type nine, type one is almost like a double stop. It's almost like playing super close together. And type nine is really far apart. So it'll sound like almost two separate notes. Gadoom. Instead of type one would be like gra. So I'm going to put these on the snare drum and we can hear how it sounds. Right. So that's type two. As you can hear it's two notes but very close together as compared to like type type 8 right very open the other cool thing about this is our scale and our steps so we can choose individually what our last step is so with that being said we can have our snare drum say go every three and a half beats we can have our I had go, let's say, four and a half beats. And what this will do is really have a cool effect. We'll just pick some different ones. So they're playing in different time signatures, basically. And you'll be able to see it. The white light will follow each one individually. can get some really groovy stuff. And the last thing is our scale. So the main one that you'll be on is the third one, the one that we're on now. As you can see, it's in 4-4 four, four, every four beats. But we can also have one where it's every three, which can be like a 6-8 like a feel or a 3-4 feel, anything with a triplet. So let's make a new pattern, and I'll show you how this works. So say we want to have like a triplet feel, almost like a dance or something slow, like a ballad. What we can do is have it every three beats, right? So one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Cool, so now we have like a waltz feel, like a triplet dance, like a ballad. Yeah, really cool. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things we can do. Uh, using the scale and your steps, there's almost endless possibilities with time signatures, genre types, and really sounds that you can make. So some small little logistic details that you should know is just how to save patches. So we have our preset here. You just go up to it and the pattern to save it, you click right next to the pattern. And say we make a bunch of changes to our instruments and we want to save that, we would go to whatever kit we want to go to and we click right and we're set. Those are saved. You want to recall it, you just go back, you find it, you click it, you're good to go. So 
This instrument is capable of multi-output, meaning each one of these channels can go to its own output. So say we want our snare drum to have a ton of reverb, but it doesn't affect any other instrument, we can do that. Say we want to have our clave pitched up a ton using uh, an effect that we have that's not in the synthesizer, we can do that and it won't affect any other channel. So how we do that is make sure in whatever DAW you're in that you're opening this instrument in multi-output. And then once we're there, open up your mixer and in Logic you can just add them. And Roland has some presets so each channel is already set. So aux one is kick drum I believe and then aux two is snare and then the three toms and so on, right? So we're just gonna mess around with sexual healing, the uh, drum beat for it, just so we can mess around with some of the stuff and it's a really groovy beat anyways. So how we do this, we go to options and sub output. And for the, the sake of this, let's just open up all of them. But just know, say, hey, I want my snare drum to have a ton of reverb, so I'm gonna open up that one. And you know, I want my clave to have a ton of reverb. Know that the clave is also the rim shot. It's, that's the one that we switched. So it would be these two. Um, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna send all of them to their own output. Just know you can also just choose any variation of all of these that you want. So now we play it you can see that they're all sending to their own channel. So you can hear the clave is a little wimpy, right? So what we can do is we can add a huge reverb effect, make it sound more present and more vibrant in that environment. So just looking at the channel, I think it's six, just looking at the send. So let's add a reverb to it. And maybe, hey, my snare, I want some reverb on that. So uh, let's see which one it is. So it's aux two, send number two. Uh, let's check some reverb on it, turn it down. Yeah. In general, you're gonna want your snares and any tight hi-hat, maraca, clave, put some reverb on it, not too much. And then your kick drum, you're kinda wanna sit very fat and present. So you're not gonna really wanna add too much other than maybe some EQ, right? We can EQ all of these separately. So another option you have if you don't wanna send this through multi-output, you can drag and drop as MIDI or audio. So if you want to use different samples but use the same patterns, you can just drop these as MIDI. And if you want to use the sound of the 808, go ahead and click drag and drop as audio. What we can do here is just click on whatever pattern you want to take. You can also do this down in the edit and just grab it and drop it to a new track. And as you can see, it's right here. We'll mute the original channel. So we're only listening to this audio track, which we just exported. As you can hear, it's exactly the same, right? As audio. So we can manipulate the audio, we can chop it up, do whatever you need to do it that way. That's an option. Another cool thing is you can also solo a track in the pattern. So say, hey, I only want to export my kick. Go to edit, solo the kick, or do any variation of solo muting you need to do. As you can see, we're only soloing our hi-hat and bass drum. So when we export the audio for it, when we listen to it, that's the only thing that it exports. So this is a really powerful plugin. It's a super accurate comparison to the original hardware. Uh, it's even more malleable, right? We have way more features with the pattern builders, the editors, uh, flam, sub steps, last steps, and, and all these different things uh, are presets that we can save. All of these are really useful. It's a really good beat making tool. Also, this is really powerful with DAWs, right? So I showed you all the different implementations, multi output, MIDI uh, is super reliable, and also it can receive control change messages. Uh, go check the manual if you want some more information on that. So yeah, I, I would highly recommend it. It's really good to at least try that one month trial. It's, I think, three bucks on uh, Rolling Cloud's website. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot and have a good one.